Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and this is kind of a little different video. I usually don't do review or testing of the product videos, but this time I thought there are a lot of questions in my inbox that, hey Atesh, should we buy the new MacBook Pro or MacBook Air or the Mac Mini or Mac Studio? And I want to share my personal opinion and personal experience with these Apple machines. Let's go ahead and get started. In the first half of the video, I will share my experience of how it feels like in working with the latest Apple M1 chips, the latest ones, and why I shifted from my 27-inch iMac into this small, tiny laptop. And in the second half of the video, I will walk you through that do I recommend it to students and do I recommend it to professionals as well. Let's go ahead. So recently I got the new MacBook Pro, which is 16 inch. Now this is not the Mac chip that is, this is one is the M1 Pro chip. But still this chip was completely capable of me moving my iMac right back there and moving my laptop right on the desk to do everything. And it's not like I just tested out with few video export and everything. I recorded the entire Next.js Crash Course series in 4K on this video so that I can try to bring this laptop on its knees but it doesn't. Now, the biggest of the issue with the reviewing of these all Apple devices is that majority of the people are pro video creator and the reviews come from the perspective of somebody who creates the video, but this is not from the perspective of a video creator. This review is from the perspective of somebody who is using that for programming and day in, day out, writing web applications, mobile application, and a whole bunch of other things. Now, in case you are interested in all those benchmark scores and awesome these B-roll videos, how the product looks like, I'm pretty sure Dave2D or MKBHD can do way more justice than me. I'm gonna review that how it looks like to code on these laptops and all these machines because I got not only this one, I got a MacBook Air as well. Now before moving on to having some time with iMac or MacBook, I decided that let's move my entire workflow on this machine only. Now I recorded a 4K series on Next.js and I installed everything that I could from Node to Django and I was even installing and running some of the Flutter apps into this one, some React Native apps. And boy, oh boy, this machine doesn't get slowed down. I have never spin of these fans as well. Nothing at all, no overheating and battery life. That is awesome, extremely awesome. I have never seen such battery life in any product ever. Now I have personally experienced and enjoyed the entirety of this MacBook. Definitely it's on the pricing side, but now let's move on to the side where I do I recommend this to students or do I recommend it to professionals first? to all the professionals. Now by professionals, I consider that even if you are earning, let's just say 10,000 or 15,000 rupees with your computer skills, whether those are programming, making apps or internship or something like that, then do I recommend these laptops? Absolutely, I 100% recommend you a MacBook Pro. You should definitely get either a Max machine or an M1 Pro machine, and you're going to absolutely love this one. For professionals, it might seem like this is a little bit on the expensive side, but since you're already making some money, this is going to boost your productivity a lot, and anything that saves my time always gets in the topmost priority in my list. Now, coming on to the part of saving the time, this is where I absolutely do a lot. Now, saving time and time management is one of the things which I focus a lot of my attention and which brings to the sponsor of this video. Now, one of the key important thing for us while maintaining the day schedule and keeping my time organized is scheduling the meetings. Meetings consume a lot of time and you need to be make sure that you are present in those important meetings. You are synced up with your Google calendars and Zoom meetings and the Google Meet and whole bunch of other things where people are organizing these meetings. This is exactly where we picked up day schedule. Now they have amazing and awesome software that they got. Also their pricing is pretty amazing. They provide a free plan so that every one of you can try. Anything that helps me to save my even a tiny bit of time, I love that product or software. I'm ready to invest in that. Now, the reason why we use day schedule for scheduling all of our product meetings, all of our internal meetings, and even sponsor meeting is because their organization and their UI is way better and their pricing is even cheaper than not to say, but Calendly. So they have the basic plan, which is more than enough for anybody who is getting started, even give you API access so that programmers can have fun with that. Also, uh, their pricing is $5 per user in case you want to go for that. And what I really absolutely love about them is, obviously everybody provides these kinds of interface. What I love about that, that how you can have your customized page, not only that, you can accept payment 
in Stripe, in PayPal, and also via the Razorpay so that you can host some of the paid meetings as well in case that is uh, what you want to have. Now they have the better uh, sch scheduling concepts for marketing, consulting, and a YouTuber like me as well, so you can go with that. Now what I absolutely love about that is how you schedule your meeting. We are scheduling all of our meetings and sponsorship talks with them. And what you're gonna also love about is how you can actually create the booking. You can create the bookings, uh, have your time slots, and they have all these features integrated right into this. So you want to host a meeting on GoToMeeting, WebEx, Google Meet, Zoom, so it's all in one place. Helps me in keeping organized. They can also uh, shoot your email and SMS and WhatsApp as a reminder that your meeting is about to come in. So that's why we partnered up for uh, with Day Schedule to sponsor this video and give you a brief tour over that. So there's a link in the description. Go ahead and check it out. Maybe you can organize yourself a little bit better and get better into the time management thing as well. Now coming back on to the video itself. Now coming on to the point that yes, I do recommend this Apple devices for professionals, but do I even recommend this for students? And students can be divided into a couple of categories. Obviously, if you are a gamer, then you shouldn't be buying any Apple device. But if you're planning to make some game or build some game, then obviously MacBooks can really, really be helpful. Okay, here is my guide and recommendation for all the students that what device you should be buying. Now, first and foremost, I would say that, hey, go for Mac mini in case you can. Now, obviously, there are some caveats with that. No screens. You have to bring in your keyboard and mouse and all of that. But in case you're looking for a setup at your home, you will absolutely love the ecosystem. And this is a great entry point for everyone. Now, I know that this looks like, hey, this is a little bit more expensive, almost like 65000 for the base model. But don't get me wrong. This base model can even perform way beyond than any other laptop that you are gonna find in the market. This is just a personal recommendation. This will also explore, give you the ability to explore the ecosystem of the Mac and maybe you're gonna love that and you're never going to come back. So that is also the point. Now in case Mac mini is not even an option for you and you want to go for something like a MacBook Air, do I recommend MacBook Air for students? Yes, I do recommend the base version of it. Now again, I do recommend it for building web apps and the mobile apps. And in case you want to build Flutter apps and React Native apps and even the native iOS app, definitely I recommend that. I even spinned off Android Studio on that and that was working absolutely fine for the very first time. I'm pretty sure that there are some optimization being done from the Android Studio side and also by the Apple team as well. So that is why I say that, yeah, this was handling pretty much all of the load. Do I recommend this for heavy and deep learning or training these models? No, probably not. You shouldn't be doing that. In fact, I don't recommend doing any kind of training such model on any computer at all. There are cheaper cloud resources available. You should be doing heavy end of those tasks there. But in case you want to do kind of a medium or a small task on that, I don't recommend this machine for that. Now, coming on to the MacBook Pro. Do I recommend MacBook Pro to students, even the 13 inch, 14 inch or 16 inch? No, I don't because they are really, really expensive machine for students, somebody who is not earning and is just focusing on uh, building applications and paying the college fees and all that. No, sadly, I don't recommend. Now, does this mean that these machines are not performing well? No, they are absolutely beast. They cannot be compared to anything. I'm enjoying that. But this kind of pricing point going 1.25 is kind of a heavy end for any student. I don't recommend it. In fact, I would wait I would say that wait for some time. If you can get hands-on onto a second-hand device, that would be way, way better. Or if you want a deal, then go for the Mac Mini that would serve you a better purpose. In fact, my personal recommendation still remains the same, that if you are just getting started your journey, get an iMac, get an old screen, a keyboard and mouse, get some money, get some internship, collect that money and then go only for the MacBook Pro. Obviously, later on your companies are gonna give you some MacBook and all these devices, but right now, don't get too much enthusiastic in that. These machines are way expensive for any student, so no, sadly not. Now with this, I would also like to cover up one more point. When I was moving from Intel-based device to the Apple Silicon, I was a bit concerned. I was concerned about whether my softwares are gonna perform exactly same on this one, or are they gonna be running there or not? 
Now, the good news is that I found no issue at all. Now, definitely, I was not jumping into the ship for the very first time. I waited for quite a while and now I'm jumping into the Apple Silicon. So I gave enough of headroom so that people can start working and optimize their software and give me a portability on M1. And now every software, every programming that I code and write, there was an M1 chip version available for that. I didn't find any single one of them that was not there. So in case you are worrying about that, please don't. M1 chip is pretty popular popular now and pretty much available everywhere. Now in case your company is using something which is proprietary to them, definitely you want to ask some of your senior member in your company that hey I'm moving into this Apple Silicon, is there going to be consistency issues or there is some proprietary software, do we have the version available and something like that. So again for the company's proprietary software, nobody can take a guarantee but for all other things you're going to find it easily. Now one final note before uh, you end up and watching this recommendation video, a lot of people compare the MacBooks with just the price and the hardware that we can buy a way better hardware in that money. What people don't also consider that it's not just the hardware that Apple is selling. It's also the ecosystem. It's also the experience that you are getting. Your experience in the Mac is way closer than what you're going to be feeling in the production as well. It's a pure Linux based kind of a Linux based machine and all the commands and entire setup that you're going to be running. It's going to be same also there. You will have the Linux support and everything right in the Mac and that's why a lot of companies also give their employees these Mac and also in their company in-house they also use Mac. It's far more of a reliable system and you're going to be finding similar experience in the production as well. Now love it or hate it, this is how Apple rolls out. They have the monopoly in the development environment or in the developers ecosystem. Yes, PCs are good. I use them also sometimes but yeah this is entirely of a different system. So again Whenever you're buying a Mac, make sure you don't only consider that is it a 2GB RAM or a 8GB RAM or a 16GB RAM. Also consider the quality of the softwares that they are producing, their operating system and the ecosystem that they are providing. I always consider that. So that's it for this video. Uh, this was a bit of a different take on the Apple side. I hope you have enjoyed this and also have got some of the answers and these answers will help you to make a better decision while purchasing a MacBook or not. And let's go ahead and catch up in the next video. Gun in my powder, my old woolen trousers, some bread for the road. The call of the bugle, another refusal to wait for the snow. She knows that I'll grow slowly as a raindrop down a window pane. She knows that I'll hold the locket on a chain to keep the evil things away.